the same smile. Gaze right down and wrestle. They saw him climb down from here. Now we prophet, prophet of Allah. And in the sky was Angel Jibra. He said, Oh, Muhammad, oh, Rasulullah. And so he walked into Mecca. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. All praise is due to Allah alone. And may peace and blessings be upon our Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon his family and his companions. Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a brand new series, The Methodology of the Prophets in Da'wah. And in this series, insha'Allah ta'ala, we want to look at calling other people to Islam. And there's no doubt that calling other people to Islam is something from the most praiseworthy of actions and the best of deeds. And in this first episode, inshaAllah ta'ala, we're going to look at our need for guidance. Our need for guidance. And there's no doubt that in the matter of da'wah, those who led this field and those who were the best example are those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose specifically for this responsibility of da'wah. And those are the messengers and the prophets alayhimu salatu wassalam. And brothers and sisters, da'wah is an act of worship by which we seek the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because it's an act of worship, and because we do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of his reward and fearing his punishment, and out of love for him subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of this, it is obligatory for us to engage in our da'wah in the way that the prophets and the messengers did. And it's not permissible for us to stray from their methodology and their guidance in da'wah. And that is why, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're going to do this series, insha'Allah ta'ala, and that is to explain some of the points around the methodology of the prophets, alayhimu salatu wassalam, in calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will see through this series, insha'Allah ta'ala, through looking at a number of the prophets, through looking at Ulul Azmi min al Rusul, the five prophets who are mentioned as being of the greatest determination, through looking at the example of some of the prophets whose stories are told to us in the Quran, like Prophet Yusuf and Prophet Yunus, alayhim as salatu was salam, we will see through these stories and evidences and through looking at examples from their lives. And from the life of our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that by which we can extract a methodology, insha'Allah Ta'ala, and a series of points and areas of benefit that we can adopt as a methodology and as a means for us to call people to the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the reality is that our da'wah would not be accepted from us unless it was in accordance with the da'wah of the messengers and the prophets and indeed most importantly in accordance with the da'wah of our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and it would not be accepted from us to give da'wah in a different way to the way that they give da'wah and perhaps throughout this series we can allude to some of the mistakes that people make when giving da'wah and some of the errors that people fall into in opposing the way of the messengers and the prophets 
who were sent revelation by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who were inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give da'wah in the best way and the way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we said that da'wah, brothers and sisters, is an act of worship. And in previous series, we have defined an act of worship as a comprehensive noun for everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from statement and action, whether internal or external. And perhaps from the greatest of those things or amongst the greatest of those things is calling people to the way of Allah Azza wa Jal. Calling people to accept Islam and calling the Muslims to return to practicing Islam. This is from the greatest of actions and acts of worship. And so we're absolutely in need of the guidance of the messengers alayhim salatu wassalam. And this guidance that we are in need of is something we are commanded to follow in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-An'am, those are the ones whom Allah guided. So take their guidance as guidance. Take their guidance as guidance. And this ayah is mentioned after the mention of 18 prophets in the Quran. 25 are mentioned in total, 18 are mentioned over a group of ayat in Surah Al-An'am where Allah mentions over a set of ayat, He mentions 18 prophets. And in conclusion of these ayat, He says, Those are the ones who Allah guided, so with their guidance, be guided. You use their guidance as guidance for you. And from the most important of the things that you can do this in is their methodology in calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this, you can see that the Quran mentions the da'wah of the prophets in detail, both in a general sense and in a specific sense. The Quran mentions their da'wah in detail, both in a general sense and a specific sense. So in general, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ we sent to every nation a messenger saying worship Allah and avoid all of those things that are worshipped besides Allah. And we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran tells us the story of specific messengers. How many of the surahs of the Quran, the surah of the Quran deal with the specific story of messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alayhim salatu was salam so you have the surah of Hud and you have the surah of Ibrahim you have the surah of Nuh you have the surah Muhammad you have the surah Yusuf you have surah Yunus and so on and so forth through the surahs of the Qur'an and many of the surahs of the Qur'an, whether they are named after the prophets or not named after the prophets, they deal extensively with the da'wah of the prophets to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how the prophets called the people to Allah and the method that they used. And we find that their method was one and there was no variation in their basic methodology and when we find there was no variation in their basic methodology and we find that our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his sunnah adopted their methodology completely we know from this and from the ayah in surah al-an'am and the other ayat that command us to follow them that we are commanded to make our da'wah a da'wah which is based upon the methodology of the prophets and the messengers alayhim salatu wassalam in calling the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this, we have to understand that 
calling the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a place and a proper set of stages to it. And perhaps one of the most important things that we can introduce this topic with is to introduce this topic with the place of da'wah and the position of da'wah. So the first thing that is obligatory on a Muslim is to get knowledge. And that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ Know that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and seek forgiveness for your sins. And so the first thing that the Prophet ﷺ is commanded to do before all of his actions is to get knowledge. And then in the same ayah to follow that knowledge with action. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِذَنْبِكَ And seek forgiveness for your sins. To follow that knowledge with action. And then after following that knowledge with action, we are commanded to call other people to it and to invite other people to act upon what we know and we act upon. And then we are commanded to have patience because we're going to see, inshaAllah ta'ala throughout this series, that whenever the prophets called their people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the response was one of difficulty and one requiring patience and requiring determination. And so this is our methodology. We learn Islam, we act upon Islam, we call people to Islam, and we remain patient upon what befalls us when we do the above. Insha'Allah Ta'ala will continue this discussion after the break. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. The same, the same style. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. We're talking about the methodology of the prophets in da'wah. And we said that da'wah in the life of a Muslim fits into a certain place. And that is that we learn and we act upon what we know and we call other people to what we know and we act upon and we are patient as a result of what happens to us when we do those things. And all of these aspects are found within Surah Al-Asr. In the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wal-Asr, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ By time, indeed, mankind is at loss except for those who believe and do good deeds and advise each other to the truth and advise each other to patience. So in this surah, we find the command to have knowledge because good deeds can only be considered good if you have knowledge to do good deeds based upon that knowledge, to call other people to the truth, and to invite other people to the truth, and to remain patient as a result of what happens when we do so. To remain patient as a result of what happens when we do so. And we know the need for the patience when we read the seerah of the Prophet wasallam, and one of the first examples is Waraqa ibn Nawfil rahimahullahu ta'ala wa radiya an who believed in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was commanded to preach Islam and he foretold that the people of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would expel him and would cast him out. The Prophet ﷺ said, are they going to cast me out? Are they going to expel me? And he said, no person brought, no person came with what you came with, accepted his people, cast him out. And this is the reality of the need of patience in da'wah. We see that from the moment the Prophet ﷺ began calling the people to Islam, 
he required immense patience, an immense amount of patience, all the way through his life. And the major acceptance of Islam when people entered into Islam in crowds didn't happen until somewhere around 20 years after he first proclaimed his prophethood salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi and so in da'wah we need to bear in mind that there is a phase after da'wah which is patience so this is where our da'wah fits in we give da'wah upon knowledge we don't give da'wah upon ignorance we practice what we preach and when we know something and we practice it, we call people to it. And when we call people to it, we remain patient as a result of what happens to us when we call other people to Islam. Because whenever you call a people to Islam, you will get a share of what the messengers got. And none of us could bear to have what the messengers got in terms of trials and tribulation but you have a share of difficulty and a share of rejection and a share of needing to be patient and needing to be calm and needing to remember that your reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's what we want to do in this series is to explore the methodology of the prophets in da'wah and perhaps one of the best things that we could begin with is to look at some of the virtues of da'wah, just a couple of the many virtues of calling people to Islam and the need of people for the guidance of Islam and our need for the guidance of the messengers and their methodology. As for the virtues of calling people to Islam, perhaps one of the greatest virtues is that this was the job of the best of mankind. The best men that mankind has ever known. And the best man of all of those men. The messengers alayhimu salatu wassalam and our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What was their job? They were not businessmen. They were not consultants. They were not doctors. They were not dentists. They weren't pharmacists. They weren't scientists, they weren't mathematicians, they were dua. They were people whose job was to call people to Islam, to submit to Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is the best job that a person can do. And there's no job better than the job of the messengers and the prophets alayhim salatu was salam because they were the best of men and Allah chose for them the best of jobs. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't be a doctor or you shouldn't be a, a scientist or you shouldn't be a mathematician. But what it means is don't allow your life to go by without taking a share of this job. Even if it's a part-time job. Don't allow a part of your life to go by without taking a piece of this job calling other people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the virtues of calling other people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that Allah azza wa jal describes it as the best of speech وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ who is better in speech than the one who calls to Allah and does good deeds and says, indeed, I am from the Muslims. And this ayah in itself is worthwhile studying to understand some of the methodology in calling the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions of the, the pillars of da'wah in the ayah. Who is better in speech than the one who calls to Allah and does good deeds? Because the da'iyah is the one that does good deeds and the one who practices what they preach. وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And from those people who submit to Allah and those people who are proud and open about their Islam, 
and who call other people to it and they themselves attribute to it and they act upon it in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes da'wah as being the best in speech the one who gives da'wah is the best in speech and from the virtues of da'wah the many virtues that are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas ta'muruna bil ma'roofi wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran You are the best ummah that has been brought forth for the people and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned three key reasons why we are the best ummah you command good you enjoin good you call other people to do good and you forbid evil and you go out and you stop people from doing evil and you call people to abandon the evil that they're doing and you have belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you're not just from those people who goes out and calls to good, but you don't have that belief. You have the right belief, you call to good, and you call the people to abandon the evil that they're doing. You enjoy good and you forbid evil. And this is the essence of calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the worst of evil is of course to make a partner with Allah. And the best of good is to worship Allah as he deserves to be worshipped alone and with no partner. And from the virtues that we will perhaps conclude this episode with is the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa arza that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned to him لِأَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حُمْرِ النَّعَمْ For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide one person from you and it is Allah who guides but for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide one person through you is better for you than the red camels and the red camels were the best of the wealth of the Arabs one person listens to something you say and they change and they accept Islam one Muslim who wasn't praying listens to what you say and they start praying it's better for you than the best of the wealth of this dunya and all the wealth that you could accumulate in a day you couldn't do better than to say something that through that thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided a person to Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided a Muslim who had turned away from Islam back to the faith and this is the best of deeds and the best of jobs, the best of speech, the best ummah and the best reward. And notice in each of these things, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu described the best. The best ummah, the best speech, the best reward, the best people, the job of the best. And that is why we're going to study, inshaAllah ta'ala, the methodology of the Prophets in da'wah. Until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The same moon, the same star, gaze right down at Rasulullah. They saw him climb down from here. Now a prophet, prophet of Allah, and in the sky was Angel Jibreel. He said, O oh Muhammad, O oh Rasulullah. And so he walked into Mecca.